Well, India is hoping that the old adage, third time's a charm, will ring true for their space program. The country has announced it will attempt a third mission to the moon just months after an effort ended with a crash landing. If successful, though, India will become just the fourth country after the U.S., Russia and China to make a successful lunar landing. Stargazers here at home have a lot to look forward to this year as well. Joining me is our senior science reporter, Nicole Martellaro. Let's uh, look up into the stars and tell us what space watchers are going to be looking forward to this year. Well, we start off the year with the meteor shower, uh, the quadrantids, and this is actually a really interesting meteor shower because you can get about 100 meteors an hour, okay, at peak, at its peak. But the peak lasts very sh a very short time. But for us, it will be around 3 o'clock in the morning. So if you're up that early, that would be great. I, I am, usually, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can see uh, these beautiful fireballs uh, lighting up the sky, which will be fantastic. So that's a great thing to start off with. And later in the uh, year, well, next month, we're going to start seeing the planets. There's a little dance of the planets happening. You've got Saturn and Jupiter and Mars in the early morning sky. And by the end of the summer, well, the middle of the summer, it'll actually be in the evening sky and Mars will actually be making its way backwards almost which will be fun and Mars will actually be the closest to Earth um, in its orbit and relatively in October so there are a lot of things to look forward to, to yeah look. dance to the plants I'm looking forward to that maybe on the in the summer on the at the cottage exactly. on the dock that's it's what be I should be doing perfect okay look forward to that speaking of which a lot of people or are people looking forward to missions because uh, increasingly we're seeing a variety of objects being uh, put into space yeah I mean it's interesting because we are seeing a lot more uh, you know, motion going out there. Uh, now, the Solar Orbiter will be launching uh, on February 5th, and that will be heading to the Sun, and it will be we don't realize it, but the sun plays a really important role in space weather and can affect us. When it burps its uh, gases out into space, it can affect satellites. It, can, it knocked out hydro to Quebec in uh, 1995, and, or, sorry, 1989. And so we're going to have that one. It'll be studying. And then there's, the Mar and there's the Mars 2020, which is an amazing mission because though we have a lot of, you know, we've had it, sent a lot of spacecraft to Mars, we haven't really had one that's dedicated to looking for past signs of life. Mm. on Mars. And this one will be doing just that. And then finally we have a Canadian one, uh, the whole involvement, and that's OSIRIS-REx, which will be taking a sample and returning it to Earth. And that actually, it's touched down to return that sample, it will happen in uh, August, so you don't have a hard date yet, but that has Canadian tech on it. It's been mapping uh, the asteroid Bennu. Wow. It's okay. Exciting. All right. As always, <laughs> in the world of science. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Nicole Martellaro joining us here in studio. Mars, meteors, and a mission to the sun. For more on what to expect this year, you can check out Nicole's piece online. Just head to cbcnews.ca.